What is up guys? So today we're gonna make some wings. Um, I actually already have them frozen, so I'm gonna start defrosting them. And um, yeah, let's just jump right into it. All right guys, so I got my wings. Like I said, it's like just room temperature water. I'm just gonna put them in here, let them get defrosted. All right guys, so what I have here is one gallon of hot water. I'm gonna add one cup of salt, kosher salt, and one cup of white sugar. And we're gonna mix this well to combine. Now basically what you're doing here is you just wanna dissolve all the sugar and salt completely. Um, the wings are still defrosting in the uh, warm water, the room temperature water, uh, which I changed earlier. And the brine can be hot now because we're gonna wait a little bit for those wings to defrost. So by the time they do, um, this should be cooled down enough. I'm actually gonna stick it on the back porch where it's nice and cold uh, to let it cool down faster. But yeah, keep stirring. All right, guys, so to this, I'll throw in a couple of bay leaves. And I'll throw in a little handful of black peppercorns. Um, we had some lemons, you can throw those in there. You kind of throw whatever you want in there. And uh, we're gonna sit down, I'll explain to Brian again, even though I've done it a bunch of times, but Give that little mix. And just kind of let that stuff hang out and just come down to room temperature. Okay, so you guys can see my brine, it's out here. It's getting nice and cold. All right, guys, so let me briefly explain to you guys what a brine actually is. What a brine is, is it's something as simple as a sugar, salt, and water mixture. And the reason you're mixing those things together is because the meat, when placed in there, will do something what's called as osmosis, which means it will, the cells of the meat will pull moisture out and then the salt and the water will pull into the meat. So basically the, the, the moisture that's coming out of the meat will come out, mix in with the salt, sugar, and water. And then as it sits there, it'll draw that moisture back in to the meat. So it's going in and out, in and out. And as it's going in, it's drawing that salt, it's drawing that sugar, the peppercorns, lemon juice, whatever you're putting in there, it's drawing that flavor into the core of the meat, into the bone of the meat. Um, and it's something that I like to do often. It's not always so much necessary. I will tell you that the turkey I made, which if you click here, there's a card um, right here, someplace up here, there's a card for YouTube. Um, and you can watch my turkey video. Um, and you don't really have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to, I suggest it's a good video, but the key point that I want to make in that video is that I used to do a 24 hour brine for my turkey and it was good. It made a difference. You could tell but that 48 hour brine made the world of difference. It was the best trick I've ever had in my life. The best trick I've ever made in my life. It was so juicy, so flavorful. Sorry, I keep getting distracted by this damn squirrel. So juicy, so flavorful, all the way to the bone, all the way to the core of the meat. And that is because I brined it the way I did. So I really want you guys to try the brine. If you make, if you watch this video, you're going to make this recipe. Um, is it completely necessary? No. I've never actually brined wings I'm gonna fry, because these are gonna be fried. Um, and I've never brined them before, so it's kind of an experiment. So I just looked up a couple basic brines on the internet, so like I said, for a gallon of water, I did one cup salt to one cup sugar. You basically want equal parts sugar, so if you did four cups of water, it'd be like a fourth of a cup of sugar, or, um, and a fourth of a cup of, uh, salt. So, like, basically it's one tablespoon of salt for every uh, whatever water part of water you just want to make that that conversion you guys just google you know a basic brine and you can figure that out yourself but yeah that's what a brine is that's why we do it let's get back to the video all right guys so we have to go to the store because with these chicken wings we're gonna make some stovetop mac and cheese so i gotta go get a couple things so let's go all right, guys, so we gotta get some Elba macaroni. Uh, the ingredients are on the screen right now, which you need for the mac and cheese. So if you don't have that stuff there, you gotta bring your ass to the store or um, Instacart that shit. So. 
We're having a little little Wegman sush. Uh, if you're not from the area, you don't really know what Wegmans is, but people from the area, you do know what it is. So we got a little wasabi, a little soy sauce. We're gonna mix that a little bit, mix and mix. Get rid of that nasty ginger shit. And then we got some nice sushi to eat on. Listen, for grocery store sushi has never been bad for me. All right, so I took the wings out of the original packaging just so I could uh, drain off the excess like slime that's on them from being wings, or whatever. And they really just gotta put our wings in there. So I'm in, this is about room temperature now, which is fine. Um, I'm not gonna hurt anything. And then just put these in the fridge. Every once in a while, I'll come and give them a little mix. Um, it's not super necessary, but if you're not doing anything for the day, why not? Um, so yeah, we got some more chicken for the That's for another video. Uh, upcoming is a fried chicken video. So we're gonna start doing that. But yeah, get your wings in the fridge. Okay guys, so what I have here is my enamel cast iron Dutch oven. And I have however much that is of peanut oil in there and we're gonna get it on you know high heat it doesn't really matter you just want to get the oil to temperature we're shooting for 375 by the way on the other burner you want to fill your large pot and don't let people tell you you need a little pot a large pot you need that to properly cook pasta so it has room to move anyways a large pot you gotta put that over high heat you gotta get that to boil for half a pound of elbow macaronis well, let's get started on the wings and everything else so as you would see on the screen um, before, I took these wings out about an hour ago, put them on a cooling rack and let them sit in the fridge. And then I took these out about 20 minutes ago maybe, to let them come up to room temperature and I patted them dry and I have them on a cooling rack so air can get circulated around them because we want them to, the skin to kind of dry out a little bit so when we fry them, it gets crispier. So let's set the wings aside, let's start making the mac and cheese. By the way, what I'm gonna do, you don't have to because I have it. I have a probe thermometer. I'm gonna turn this on. And I'm gonna set the temp to 375. Actually, I don't think it goes up that high. It doesn't matter, just put your thermometer in there and this is gonna kinda tell you where you're at. And we want 375. Okay guys, so into a bowl, crack two eggs, one, two, add six ounces of evaporated milk, and a couple of dashes of hot sauce by a teaspoon. Pinch of salt. And some freshly cracked black pepper. And whisk this to combine. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn my scale on now. You don't absolutely have to do this step, but I have the scale, so why not? We're gonna change this to ounces. We need two more ounces of cheese. 2.4, that's perfect. Let's go out there, eight, that makes 10 ounces of cheese. Buy it yourself and shred it yourself, that's important because the cheese you get from the pre-shredded stuff has a coating of sawdust or some shit on it to help it not stick, and you don't wanna eat that, so shred it yourself, not that much work. As far as the size, um, let's go with the medium grate. Grate your cheese.
All right, so you want to add a nice bit of salt to the water. Okay. Stir it up a bit. And add half a pound of your pasta. It's about half the box. Give that a quick stir. Maybe add a little bit more. Okay, let that cook al dente. So if the package says, it says seven minutes, um, which is fine. So let it cook for about six-ish and then check it, five-ish, check it. Okay, our oil is up to temp. So while that's going, we're gonna put a half a stick of butter into a pan for medium or low heat start melting so our oil is hotter than 375 we want that because we put the wings in, it's gonna drop okay so carefully start adding wings kind of let it calm down Okay, it's starting to calm down, add a few more. All right, that should be enough for now. They're gonna fry for 12 minutes. Okay, while that's going, I got some garlic. Okay, that I'm gonna crush into here. All right guys, so here's the thing. I said 12 minutes, but normally when wings are done frying, they float. I'm gonna pull these, and we're gonna take their temperature. But they look like they're definitely done to me because our oil is running a little hot right now. So we're actually gonna drop it also. The temperature off the heat on the um, Temp these wings. Okay. Well, while those are cooling for a second, our pasta is done. We gotta strain that. this back on in the back, turn the heat off. Then we're gonna add in four tablespoons of butter. Okay, squirt this butter around a little bit with the garlic. Four tablespoons of butter. Get that melted in there good. Melt the butter. All right guys, the temperature we're looking for is 165. I'm gonna say these are probably done, but we'll check 171. One ninety-one. So these ones are probably overdone, but that's okay. Or have a lot more. But also, we brine these, so they probably are fine. All right, let's add another batch of wings to our oil, and we're gonna watch them. As soon as they start floating, they should be done. Let it settle down a little bit. Okay, it's starting to settle. Add a couple more. Two more. 
important you work in batches so you don't overcrowd the pan. Okay guys, back over to this side. Our butter is melted. So now you're gonna wanna add your cheese sauce. Mix that up a bit and add your 10 ounces of shredded cheese. Uh, you might want to do this in little batches just so it doesn't um, take too long to melt. So that's good for now. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to stir it to melt. Okay. While that's going, I'm going to pour in some hot sauce. Okay, give that a nice mix. I just realized it didn't hit record, but I tried one of those wings that like overcook, and because we brine them, they're still juicy as shit and they're so crispy. Hold on. I don't know if we can hear it over the fryer. But yeah. Okay, so those wings are starting to float. That means they should be cooked. So we're gonna start folding them. See, he's floating. That guy's probably done. Floating, probably done. We're gonna test the temperature of these though, obviously to make sure. But like I said, normally when they start to float like, like this, it means they're done. These two here are floating, so we're gonna leave them. We're gonna come back over here, move this out of the way, and we're gonna take the temperature of some of these wings right here. Oh, you can't see that, huh? 182. Let's try this guy. Let's try this guy. So yeah, cooking them till they float definitely is, you know what I mean, they're done. Mmm. Wow. Guys, I'm telling you, don't skip that brine. Holy crap. Pay attention to your temperature though. So you see the temperature dropping? I'm gonna raise the heat a bit. Right, you gotta make sure you're keeping right around 375. A little hotter is not gonna hurt. A little lower is not gonna hurt either. You just got to go longer. Really, I think all that's important is they start floating. Once they start floating, they're done. That seems to be working. I mean, they're delicious, they're juicy. Then definitely make sure you guys do that brine seriously. Holy crap. All right guys, so I just taste the mac and cheese. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of pepper. Okay. Touch, some salt, and that's what that means when people say season to taste. Look at that. All right, guys. So the way I prepare these, you take a handful of them. You know, many you want at a time. Take a little bit of your sauce. Punch them right in there. Okay, and then just toss, right? Take them and just toss them. And it gets them some coat in that beautiful, beautiful buffalo sauce. I really guys want you to see how beautiful that sauce is. Hopefully the color is coming through good on the camera with the color corrections. Another thing you can do is dry rub your wings. So I got here a little bit of Danos. I'm gonna put some of that in there. Let's hit one of those Danos
I'm pulling out the cartilage, by the way. Wow. I'm telling you guys. These wings are insane. Seriously, seriously make these ones. You guys get the point. Coach your wings whatever you want. If you want to do an Asian style wing, if you want to do a hot wing, you can make it hotter, put more hot sauce than I put in there. If you want to make a barbecue wing, mix a little barbecue sauce and butter in a pan with some garlic or something. You, the possibilities are endless. You're the wing ding or your ding wing or whatever the fuck <laughs> Chef John would say for food witches. But yeah guys, these, these really are incredible. Mmm. It's so juicy. Mm. Barbecue ones. Barbecue. What do you think? Pretty good. Fucking. Woo! All right, guys, keep frying them. Alright guys, let's get one of these wings. Mmm. Oh my god. I'm telling you guys. Two of the best ones I've ever had or made. Wow. Make that brine. I want you guys to see in really good lighting just how perfect those wings are. Like, they're insane. All right guys, so that's actually gonna be it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. Seriously, try those wings. They're insane. They were so good. That brine made the world of difference. Definitely, definitely don't skip that because the meat itself is just so juicy and flavorful itself. And then you had the crispiness from the skin and then the sauces or the dry rubs that I put on them. Uh, again, please tell me how the quality is right now and when I'm in the basement, I'm working with this lighting here. There's a light in front of me uh, there and then a little over there. So it's not the greatest lighting. So it might be like kind of noisy here in the background. Um, but I'm working on the color corrections. Um, tell me what you guys think of the quality. I definitely got to... Um, learn some more stuff with it. There's a couple of things I need to learn how to make things a little easier for myself. Um, but I'll learn that. And I gotta figure out the perfect render setting still. Um, because the steak video, while it hasn't got up to YouTube completely yet, which more on that in a second, um, it looks great. It rendered a 42 minute video in about 45, 46 minutes, which is awesome. But the only downside is that video is 82 gigabytes, which is absolutely insane. I can't have videos be that big. They're just going to take way too much space and take way too long to upload. Um, but with that being said, let me know what you think of the quality. Please give this video a thumbs up or a comment below. Subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a video. And I will see you guys next time. Joey Kong 94 out.